Hey everyone, it's Dominic here. How's it going? All right, today, today I'm going to, as per a request, do a disassembly and assembly video on this FU47SS. Now, just a quick recap. It's in the other videos that I've made on this on this knife. You can go check it out. I did a quick polish. Uh, well. I did an extensive polish uh, for me it's quick but for some some of you that might not have uh, experience um, working with metal um, it, it might take you quite some time now this came as a kit and as a kit it comes a little bit rough uh, meaning um, it's all brushed finish which is kind of nice but the milling holes is full of grease and uh, milling fluid and all that the cooling fluid um, these channels, the, the edges, the leading edges of these channels are rough. So you're going to have to do a little bit of, maybe a little bit of sandpaper in between there. And you just got to be careful that you're not sanding the outside of the handle to scratch, to, you know, give it that ugly scratched look. But it didn't matter with me because uh, I have a bench buffer. And uh, just grab this scrap cloth here, just give it a quick shine to show you. And, it, and I gave it a mirror polish. So, um, I, uh, um, now it feels all uh, smooth to the touch, and um, that's, I like it like that. But except the, the the downside to it is that it's now a, a finger a fingerprint magnet. All right, so to continue really quick on this, this is the Fu forty seven SS, standing for stainless steel, meaning the stainless steel handles, four forty C blade, sharp, sharp, sharp comes comes to you razor hair shaving sharp um, which is excellent with a adjustable uh, adjustable T latch so you're going to need a T8 for your pivot pins and a T6 for your latch pins so uh, we'll just continue real quick so that this video doesn't become really long and I hate long videos well I don't I can't say I hate them but uh, if they don't have any content and they go too long, then yeah, obviously I don't, I don't like them too much. Okay, so quick tip. The presentation side has no screwdriver interface, meaning there's no flat, no Torx, no square, no nothing on uh, no Robertson on this side to put a screwdriver to hold this the pivots from spinning. So one way to get around that, whether open or closed, closed is obviously safer. Uh, you take your handles and just give them a gentle squeeze. You don't have to crank down them. Just give them a gentle squeeze. Stops the pivots from spinning around in their pivots. And you don't have to worry about that backside. So work over a cloth. That way you catch all your, all your hardware. And work low. If you work up high, they can still bounce and then fly across the room and lose something under a piece of furniture and they're gone for forever. The, the gremlins under the furniture take them. So with your uh, screwdriver or sometimes you can just shake them out but with your screwdriver just give your pins a pop one fell out by itself that's perfect so just keep one and one they're interchangeable so it doesn't matter uh, hardware doesn't matter which side goes on what but one thing you do want to keep in mind is the way your blade is oriented with your two handles this is the bite handle, meaning if you grab this handle and you do some flips on this, the uh, the blade will swing down onto your finger and uh, give you a cut. And one bushing just came flying out, and the other one's sitting up here. And they're brass on this uh, on this particular model. So to keep it uh, from becoming confusing for you, keep everything looking in the same direction. So if you took the knife apart this way, there's the channel. Keep it looking like that. Then you put your take your blade out, keep it looking like that. Then take your other other handle and keep it facing that way. All right. So there you go. You got your your hardware on both sides, and the knife just goes back together the way the way that uh, I took it apart. Now, to work on this side, get your T6. And Really, it doesn't matter which side you start first. And you always want to press 
press down on your screws when you're screwing uh, either tightening or uh, loosening because uh, if you if you're too gentle it might skip across across the uh, across the top of the head and strip and then you're not going to have a good day after that so just pop the pop it out where you might be able to get a nail underneath the the head of the screw here you go and just pull now this part is going to be tricky to get back together because as you can see here let me see if i can give it a little bit of a focus hocus pocus um i don't know does that come through it should the spring loop is hooked over that pin and it's not it's not hard it's just it can be a little bit tricky because everything's flopping around when it's loose right so here we go remove this side now and you want to when you're doing it just apply a little bit of pressure with your finger on that to keep it from spinning all right and again sort of keep your parts separate that pin went with that screw this screw went with this pin pop it out there it is and slowly pull out your your latch with the spring there's the spring that's what it looks like right you got the hook and you got the loop that hook goes right on that little tiny hole and that's your pivot hole sorry I went off camera there because I'm looking at my part instead of the camera <laughs> okay that's your pivot hole and that's the little hole that that the top of the, the little hole this little uh, thing hooks onto spring hooks onto here like a zone. hold on oops confuzzled like that all right and it doesn't matter which way if you hook it this way or you hook it the other way it doesn't matter that part the orientation really shouldn't play any important part just as long as once it's in there it's in there and you want to make sure that that spring hook let's see if I can give you a backing here sorry I'm all over the place right now on you I don't mean to be all over the place just hang tight you see how that it's it's shaped nice if that spring is open if that hook is is a little bit open like this you might want to take a pair of pliers and squeeze down the hook a little bit so that it, so that the it looks like that where the top of the hook is parallel with the the spring body and these are sorry my fingers are getting dirty this is all the the gunk that's inside the knife once uh, you start taking it apart okay so to continue real fast so it's not getting really long and this is how this is how your your kit's going to look it's your bag is going to have all these parts all these loose parts just in one bag all together uh, the screws are not going to be screwed together or anything it's just going to be loose parts like this uh, you're going to get one handle, then you're going to get the other handle, then you're going to get the blade. Uh, and the blade usually, uh, one of the handles comes with the hardware. And one of the handles comes uh, by itself, if you get it as a kit. Just the way they do their inventory, so uh, don't question why, it's just the way they do it, I guess. Uh, I, I don't work for them, so <laughs> I don't know why they do it that way, but uh, it works. And... Uh, I get my knife so that's all I care so hook that in and it's just a reversal really now you want this hole I got to keep making sure that you guys are in focus here you got to make sure this hole I got to come up higher and refocus again this hole of the spring is going in this way all right 
It doesn't matter if it's upside down or right side up. It doesn't matter. The orientation, again, doesn't matter because there's no, you know, this thing is, it's not squared off or anything. It's not notched where it needs to go in a certain way or anything. So just get it in that way. So uh, to try to keep it on camera, it might be trickier than if you guys, you know, if I wasn't going to do it on camera. Just uh, shovel it in there and line up the the spring hole with the pin. Now you might want to orient your screws a certain way. So if if I like to keep all the uh, the uh, the domed sides facing the same direction just for my OCD. So just pop it in and I think I already got it. Yep I did see perfectly. There it is all happy in its spot. This part is still loose and that's the pin that the, that the spring is hanging on to. And then you take your little screw, pop it into the hole. Now this is the trick how you uh this is the trick to uh avoid cross threading never start screwing forward like tightening don't start uh, screwing your screws tight uh back go backwards until you feel a click you might not be able to hear it on camera but you'll feel it under your fingers you'll feel a click and then you can start going forward then you know that the the um the threads became uh, 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 they get aligned in that sense if you start to screw forward it might feel stiff and then you might do two or three turns of cross threading and now you've sort of messed up the you either messed up your screw or you messed up the uh, the bolt one of the two one of the, or both you probably messed up both and uh, you're gonna have to get some new hardware and that's gonna be a bummer now with this, you can see that it's not going to be aligned naturally because the spring needs to be flexed outwards a little bit. So what you do is you put your pin in there and you sort of start to align it and then pull the pivot out, stretch the pin, stretch the, the spring just a slight amount to get the, the pivot in. I mean to get the, uh, yeah, the pivot pin in. There we go. And then again, you just move the move it around so that it pops through the other side. And again, now we're going to put the screw in. I'll try to make it shorter, move a little quicker for you guys. Back click and then go forward. There we go. Now, just snug them tight. Don't go crazy tight. These ones don't have to be really really tight. Just fingertip fingertip strength tight all right remember how you orient your your blades i mean your handles to the blade just like that now a little trick to get your to get your okay so if i want these facing upwards now i'm going to have to flip the whole assembly over now you can leave the hardware where it is but you want to take this handle Bring it onto this side. Take this handle, bring it onto this side, channels facing inward, and I'll take your blade and flip it over. Now, take one pin, hold it with your finger so that it looks something like that, and you want to just hold it like that so that part of the pin is poking through the inside. You take your bushing and just pop it over like that and just leave it enough space for the blade to get its to get inside there so you can turn your blade around but you have to keep it oriented the right way so flip it this is going to be the open position now and if it doesn't go in just relax the your finger enough just to get the pin in the to get the, the to drop the pin down to get the the blade under and then take a, a washer and just slide it in until it bangs into the pin 
and then you know take your take something uh, like something to push just to make a little room and then scoot your pin uh, scoot your washer in under and then just line it up like this and do a couple of shakes back and forth while you're pressing on the back of the pin and click it goes right in now put your oops I polish these screws so so shiny they're slippery and having oily fingers now with the with the, with the grease now you can finger if you can finger tighten if you can finger start the screws then you won't cross thread them because your fingers are not strong enough to cross thread but with a screwdriver you can cross thread so go back to your T8 and just snug it down now you got one side on now if you want to close it again just for safety go right ahead but then you're gonna to have to flip that back over right you just got to make sure that it's always oriented like this so we'll just stay like stay like this because um, we're keeping all the pin heads all on the same side you want presentation side all on the same side so take your handle do the same trick just repeat try to be quick because the video can get a bit long right there we go and even if you push the pin all the way up before you put that washer in no big deal just take your washer just take your washer and lay it on the blade like that scooch it under till it bangs into the pin again see like that and then just take your screwdriver push the pin backwards a bit while you're holding it at the same time at the at the bottom so you have enough room for the, the washer to scooch under just enough whoops there we go see just like that and then line it up with your screwdriver like that a couple of shakes a couple of back and forth like that and it pops in see there we go now take that finger tighten if you can this one's going to be stubborn so just take your screwdriver back up reverse go reverse like you're unscrewing it so you feel click and then screw forward tightening it now there we go we have that same problem with the pivot you can't see it because it's so shiny you won't be able to see it but the the, the screw is just spinning round 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 so what do you do just take your take your handles give them a little squeeze and there we go the pivot does not spin the pin stops spinning in it in the pivot hole and just give it a, a snug until see this one is this side is a bit over tight but a couple of back and forths and it starts to swing freely again and there we go assembled now one trick now you can stop here you can leave the video if you want but I'm going to take one one of these screws out again well I'll take them both out why not we'll do it quick take the screw out and this here's a trick Teflon tape this is the tape that you put around threads uh, piping threads and stuff like that it helps seal joints uh, so it doesn't leak and it also helps the uh, when you're putting two pipes together that have threads or anything that really that has threads uh, it helps them seat further because it's lubricative it's Teflon so just take a little tiny bit just break it off it's very easy once it starts to break off it looks straight gets stringy and gets weird looking so just you know you can split it in half and just take a piece try to keep it flat you don't want it turning into a piece of rope you want it flat and this is the tricky part because the screw is thin and small I just give it a little I don't use Loctite I use Teflon tape see and you kind of want the threads to pop I don't know if I I don't know if it's coming out fuzzy sorry guys you want the threads to sort of show through the Teflon tape the way I have it and 
it gives a gentle retention. It does. It's it's not as strict, as strong as thread locker, because thread locker. I don't like thread locker on my battle songs because again, I like to readjust every once in a while, and thread locker just threatens uh, you, you know, stripping a screw because thread locker can really lock in that uh, lock in your screw and then you might be able to strip a screw out and you don't want that. Thread locker is good for permanent permanent situations and to me a balisong pivot is not a permanent situation so it gives you gentle retention. Alright guys and repeat for the other side so I'm just going to cut it short here. Have a good day and I hope you thought this video was informative and me slightly entertaining. <laughs> Alright, thanks guys. Bye.